In this module, we'll be talking about hypothesis testing. So at the end of this session, you'll be able to explain hypothesis testing, you'll be able to talk about confidence intervals, look at the difference between confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, describe the central limit theorem, explain type 1, that's alpha risks, Type 2, which is beta risk error, set up a null on an alter, alternate hypothesis, and determine the difference between sampling standard deviation and population standard deviation. So getting back to our overall roadmap for the IEEE DMAIC process, well, under Analyze, we have various things that we're going to be trying to do relative to hypothesis testing, which gets involved with uh, alphas and beta risks and so on that we'll be talking about here. So this is where we're at in the drill down of the analyze phase, where we're really looking at trying to make infer inferential statistics in 7.4, try to look at the appropriate sample size, and then come uh, look at the hypothesis testing. So basically what we have is the sample is uh, taken to be taken from a population of interest. And I think it's important to focus on what is the population of interest. So just by picking a sample of 200, 12, or 30 does not necessarily mean that's the population of interest. If they were picked all in one day, that would not necessarily be talking about the variability that you can have between days. So we need to be conscious of that. So that's the reason I like to get data from the region of stability on the 30,000 foot level chart, and then get the data from that point in time, not for last year, but since the region of stability, because then that means when this process is changing, it should be stable. So basically, a hypothesis checks whether observed data provides support for a particular theory, or what we call hypothesis. Uh, Confidence interval are somewhat related, but they're different in that it uses sample data to create a point estimate and then a confidence interval around some parameter, for example, the mean value. So if we have a distribution as shown at the top and we were to pick five samples from that distribution, we wouldn't expect the average of those five samples to be the mean of that distribution. So it's got some uh, variability about the population, and also it has some variability about the sample. So you can see the population has the true mean value that's shown by the red star, but for any individual sample that we have, we're going to have a variability associated with it relative to the overall population. So if we were to look at that overall population, and then we were to calculate the uh, standard deviation of the smaller um, of the uh, samples that we have, that's when we have the sampling distribution. So the standard error on that would be that standard deviation the overall population divided by 1 minus the, uh, or 1 5 minus the number of uh, one, 1, and so you end up with 4. So the standard error is the standard deviation over square root of n. Now this is an important relationship that we encounter a lot when we're testing various hypotheses. So it's important to know this relationship. So in hypothesis testing, we want to basically decide if certain parameters really affect relationships. Again, we came away from our brainstorming session in the major phase on the wisdom of the organization, theories on what might impact our overall process output metric. And this is a place where we can test those theories. We might think there are different between machines, operators, days of the week, time of the day, you know, different raw material lots, temperatures, you know, uh, pressures or whatever. And now we can go in and test those hypotheses out with the understanding that if we get a good feel for what's happening in the process, that can help us go understand what we might do differently to improve the output of the response. 
So the hypothesis testing basically has two pieces to it. It's got the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So the null hypothesis could be that we have equal means between two different populations. The alternate would be we don't have the same means. And then we use a test statistic or rule to decide whether to reject the null hypothesis. So a specific probability, that's, used, that's the alpha value, it defines the maximum allowed probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected when it is true. The power of the test on the other side is 1 minus beta. That is, a null hypothesis will be rejected when it is false. Sample observations to be used for testing the hypothesis is what we, we get involved with. This table here, which is also in the chapter, it goes in and says where you know, it kind of describes what the alpha risk and the beta risk is, or type 1 error, which is alpha, and type 2 error, which is beta. So we're going to make a conclusion. Now, we could be right or wrong, and that's dependent upon the alpha or beta value. The beta value is dependent upon the sample size. So now, if we have an alpha value, we say it's significant, then the thing is, you know, that's, there's only a certain alpha risk of being wrong. But on the other side, if it's not significant, then we have to go in and look at the beta risk. So the beta risk is really dependent upon the sample size. So if you got a larger sample size, then your beta risk goes down. So mean tab provides a p-value, the probability value, when you're actually doing the hypothesis test. So we'll be seeing that p-value in a lot of different uh, modules that we'll be covering here. So, uh, you know, the type 1 error, you can also look at that. It's got the confidence level associated with that. So if the p-value is less than the value we, we'd like to have, then we, uh, you know, we reject the null hypothesis. We leave the alternative to rather than the null hypothesis. If p-value is more, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So now people might think, well, we're talking around in circles here. We'll accept the null hypothesis. No, you never accept the null hypothesis. You fail to reject the null hypothesis because that's an important distinction to make. So in summary, we talked about hypothesis testing, the central limit theorem, alpha and beta errors. Also, I really didn't get into delta and the p-value, but delta, it gets involved with the beta value. So delta involves in how close is close. So if you're looking at uh, within a thousandth of an inch, then you might say, okay, plus or minus a ten thousandth from that. So that would be a delta. And that gets involved in the beta calculations. We talked also about the null and the alternative hypothesis and the purpose of the confidence interval difference between confidence on hypothesis test and difference between sampling standard deviation and population standard deviation.